Hey everybody, it's Scott, and we are in, we are firmly ensconced in the Lore Master's Tower tonight, and we are continuing our, I guess our adventures throughout the the uh, the lands in Middle Earth. Uh, the area is called it's called Ariador that we're in, and we're picking up from where we left off last time. Just to kind of catch everybody up, we um, the the patron of this group is is. Uh, is Balin, and he said that there was some sort of a weird glowing light in some ruins, and he wanted the group to go check it out and see what it is. And the group made their way um, sort of towards that 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 goal, and in the process of going there, they they encountered this forested area, saw some uh, signs of life, so like there was a camp there. They went up to investigate it, found an elf that was badly injured. Um, they nearly killed him <laughs> by trying to heal him but they eventually healed him <laughs> and um come to find out that there's something strange happening in the forest it used to be an elven refuge called Tyndalen. i guess that's still the name of it but the elves have abandoned it long ago and there are at this point there are uh, three el well there's four elves and one of them has disappeared and um apparently when the an when everything started happening in the forest all the animals started attacking them Three of them ran back out. One of them disappeared. Probably ran further in, and uh, they're they're here to look for a particular gem that is um, that is very precious to them. They came from the Gray Havens, and they're planning to take this this gem back with them. But they haven't gone. They haven't gone in again. They were just kind of regrouping. Um, our intrepid hero was it player heroes? That's what they're called in this game. Had um, encountered them, and they they went into the woods. Um, and did a little bit of exploring, eventually found an old ruined, um, s sort of an elven village, went up in there and you, uh, you guys uncovered, uh, a journal and, uh, you know, I guess it was written in elvish. So I, <laughs> I guess it was our elf that read the thing. And unfortunately there was a curse on it. So as he started reading it, he began like all of the veins in his body began surfacing and he just began to sort of, you know, they turned into like fissures and cracks and as you watched his body sort of shattered and came into like became like you know porcelain that just started breaking and falling apart and now you get this pile of whatever on the ground that used to be your elf and i say that because um arlen told us he's not gonna be able to play anymore so we just killed his character um orgolad <laughs> i barely knew you <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. So before we get started, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting the like, hitting the subscribe button, maybe turning on notifications, we appreciate any feedback that you guys have. Really, it really means a lot to us. So let's go ahead and let everybody introduce themselves tonight. Uh, the five survivors. We've all, we've just had one casualty already. That's great. Um, so I'll start at the top here. Let's see. Um, Jim, why don't you go first? I'm Jim from Minnesota, and I am playing Nigel Oakstyle, a, well, I was about to say a nobleman from Bree, but, well, that's not true. He's an exceedingly common man from Bree, as I think most men are, and uh, he's uh, probably the fourth son from a merchant family, and he's known for pathfinding, trying to do his best to help his family establish a mercantile path all over Ariador. It's not going that well. So <laughs> okay. hopefully this yeah, hopefully this uh treasure finding and all that will help the family fortunes out. There'll be a little op there'll be some opportunities there. Very good. Uh yeah. Eli, let's have you go next. Hi, I'm Eli from the Crit Has Podcast and today I play Mungo Maggot, a sneaky hobbit from the Shire and uh he's trying to make the maggots you know, a popular name around his hometown. So he's kind of getting into some adventuring. That's very good. And the Crit Heads podcast, it's mainly a, a in-person Call of Cthulhu-based podcast, right? And you you have it where? Where do you guys, where can people listen oh, to it? Yeah, you can have it on uh, YouTube and Spotify. Uh, we're basically a horror podcast. And yeah. Or if they want to, they can come over to the house and just watch you guys play. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's not have that happen. Um, nice. um uh, a quick question uh -huh. about, uh, about about Mr. Maggot, about Mr. Mungo Maggot. Um, any relation at all to Farmer Maggot? Yeah, that's and his. Uh, that's his uh, great great uncle. 
yeah. Remember, awesome. this is about this is about eighty years before like Frodo hadn't even been born yet. So he may be he may be your great great nephew. You may be the great great uncle. Who knows? Ah, uh, okay, yeah. So he's okay. <laughs> so you have to stay awesome. alive. You have to stay alive, or you can't sire far, farmer maggot. That would be terrible if that didn't happen because there's nobody to chase yeah. Merry and Pippin at that point. Oh, so, so that's you're called plot these. armor, son. Oh my god, that's exactly yeah. what that's called. <laughs> I love yeah. it. So, so you're so you're the Easter egg. I love it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so Brian, let's have, you, let's have you go next. Hey. Uh... Okay, we've Brian. If you're talking, I can't hear. You. I heard the hey, and that's as far as it went. Uh, I. My name is Brian. Uh, I play Thorgrun Grimbeard, or uh, from Durin's Folk. I've been practicing my Scottish I like all it. week long, so I could so I could uh, <laughs> I'm more dwarvish. Yes. You know you've got a good group when they take the time away from the game to prepare for the game with their accents, and I'm sure that the people in your your life are like, "What on earth are you doing?" But that's great, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> Get your tutor hole. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, Ian, you go next. Ian from North Carolina playing uh, Gotharan, the ranger of the north, always on the lookout for the enemy and destroying the forces of the shadow. Very good. And last but not least, we have uh, Mike. Hello, everyone. My name is Mike. I'm from Minnesota as well. And... I will be playing Aerodin. He is a barding or a man of Dale, a nobleman, and he was sent west by uh, King Bard to do Balin's bidding. So hopefully we uh, stay out of trouble. Very good. Let me get rid of. I gotta get rid of Orgolad really quick here. So now that we've taken, I've removed him from your fellowship. Um, do you guys have... I need to put Balan in there for your patron. Hold on one second. Do you guys... Um, the, the different roles that you had, we have. We now have Nigel Oakstout as our, as our guide, so you can only have one of those. We only have Aradin as a hunter. We only have Thorgren as a scout, and we've got Gothfarin and Mungo Maggot as lookouts. I don't remember what... what uh, you know, what the... Uh, what Orgolad, what Orgolad did, because I removed him before I looked. But does any <laughs> does anybody want to move around and, and like, instead of two lookouts, maybe you could take one of you guys and have him be a hunter or a scout? I just just wanted to ask. I think I'm terrible at anything, but but a lookout, honestly. Okay, okay, that's fine. All right, so let me do one thing. I want to take. Let's put. Do I have Balan already created here? I think I do. Yeah, I do. So I should be able to drag him in here. He should be. A, I think he shows up as first as a contact or a connection. Nope, he didn't. I have to put him. I guess I have to do it very carefully here. So let's put him in. If you guys open the the fellowship now, you should. Yeah, Balan is in. Um, he's now one of your connections, and I'm going to add him. I'm going to make him. How do I do? Okay, I do it this way. I have to hold that down in there as well. Okay, so I've just made him your patron. So, remember, and I'm going to say he's in, for now, he's in Bree, but he'll be in Moria fairly soon. So, remember in this particular game, you guys have fellowship points. You have hope points, so if you want to influence a particular role, you can spend a hope point to you know increase the role by one skill die or whatever. But, last time we didn't, you guys didn't use any of your fellowship points and you get seven fellowship points i believe so there's five of you plus he gets a plus two, you get a plus two for having um balan as your uh patron so every night you've got seven points to use and if you don't use them like tonight if you don't use them next week they don't carry over we'll have to get you'll get another seven so i think it you know just keep that in mind and the things that you can use them for are to refresh your hope points so if you spend a fellowship point everybody gets a hope point. So I would I would suggest that you guys spend your hope points in order to, you know, influence your roles and then before the night's over with spend these fellowship points to maybe refill that. Um, that's probably the best way to do it. And you can also call on Balan. He's got a special 
I forget what his special um his his bonus is or whatever, but if you guys want if you guys want me to look that up, I will. But I think it's combat rolls are favored. That's what I thought too. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. That's good to confirm that. Okay. So we are. Let me go back to the map where we're at here. Yeah. This is where we are. I will activate that and put you guys on that map. Can you guys see it? Yes. Okay. So we stopped with you guys roughly, I would say roughly here, generally, and that's where you found the little elf village. You just finished reading, or at least your elf who was killed, just finished reading um, the little journal. Do you want to reread it? I mean, I'm, it's been a week, so I don't know if you are if you feel a need to go through it again, um, but I can reread it to you if you'd like. Sure. Um, and when you read it last time, we didn't really have all of the context anyway. So right. Well, and that's part of this thing. It's obviously it's it's a fragmented journal. Um, the journal is written in Elvish, but I'm going to say that he read it out loud to you before he turned into pieces of pottery. Um, Gough Farron, can you read Sin Sindarin? I assume so. I can speak. Oh yeah, you're a ranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay, so you're you're able to do it. So I, I'm just going to say that you pick the thing up and read it out loud to them. And if you want to lie, tell me, and I'll I'll change the story. Um, <laughs> it says this this journal or this diary contains many notes as well as sketches of plants, flowers, and maps. For the most part, the journal is illegible. The dampness of the hiding place has blurred the ink. You remember it was in this sort of grayish cloak that it was wrapped in. Um, and uh, there are a few pages here and there that can be read. And here's what here's the ones that you can read. The first one, it says, Today I made Herunin happy. I brought him that bizarre animal skull I found on my last trip in Wilderland, the one that appears to have three small horns. Who knows what its original appearance was? Perhaps some kind of goat born with a deformity? Now it has found a new home in a respectable collection. Um, then the next one that you can read, it says, My trip to Rivendell turned out to be very useful. In the library, I found some very interesting old maps, which I copied to the best of my capabilities. I put my copies safely in the hiding place in the clearing for them to be reproduced by a more skilled cartographer. And then the last legible page says, The enemy is here. We were not expecting such a terrible host. I am needed. I am sorry, Merwin. I will come back to you. And that's what the, that's all it says. All right, so let's pick up from there. All right. And I think last week we talked about uh, finding that clearing, right? Yeah, I, I've already uncovered it. That clearing is that, well, I don't know if this is what you're talking about, but the thing I've uncovered is that lake that's sort of in the middle there. You can see that beyond where you are. You can see it on the path when you were coming in. So I went ahead and cleared it out. And I think I have a... I think I have a picture of it as well. I can show everybody again. Let's go here and here. I've been slowly sort of backporting all of my um, pictures because I did these pictures and then I realized, hey, I didn't do them with the comic book art, which I prefer, and now I'm having to redo all of them. And I've, I haven't gotten finished with them yet, but that's fine. Uh, do I have one of those? No, no, no. Maybe this is it. Yeah, this is the picture. Sorry, it's that's the that's the forest and the lake. Sorry that that you guys saw whenever you were coming in. So we'll leave it there. So what do you guys want to do? Well, what do you think, guys? I Perhaps mean, we should get a uh, mm -hmm. get in a good vantage point and maybe have somebody scout ahead and see um, what lies along this lake. And he said something go. about a hiding place in the clearing. Does anybody know anything about that? Should we be looking for some hiding place? That's, right. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's what I got from the journal. I want to know where he hid this thing. So I, mean, I don't want to say X marks the spot, but... I could scout ahead. Okay. Nice. So tell me which, how you guys want to do this. I'm going to sneak, I think, to a point where, like, the, the, like to the edge of the tree line mm -hmm. and use my, my useful item, my telescope, okay. to, 
to scan the area. Okay. Is everybody going to stay back in the sort of the, well, these, these ruined elven buildings? Or is somebody going to go with him? Or tell me how you're breaking this up. Well, I mean, now that's a good plan because, uh, or a good way to look at it because I want to know if one of us can go with him and help keep all the birds and the wildlife off of them. Well, the interesting thing is sense. as you got into the elfin building and as your elf died, the birds and the animals mm -hmm. seem much less interested in you now. Right. But if we leave these buildings, they might get interested again. That is true. And that is true. Yeah. And, I, and I'm just wondering if there's, oh, I don't know exactly what I'm trying to say. Um, you want to shoo we them away. Drag, yeah, if we were playing Dragon Bane, I could probably make it a lot more fair, but we're not. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Let me think here. Um, yeah, well, I'm probably I'm not trying to be to stealthy, this, so no one that yeah, isn't right. stealthy should not come with me. Yeah, and that's definitely not me. I'm not a stealthy person, so I don't. I don't think it wise for the rest of us to stay all the way back here in the Elven Village. I think we should stay close. That way, if our scout runs into trouble, they can you okay. know, make some sort so, of noise or give some sort of a signal, and then we can all rush into his aid. Right. So oh, maybe I'm let him go. I'm trying to get in trouble. Let, yeah. <laughs> so let him. So let him, so let him go like 15 feet or 100 feet ahead of us, kind of thing. Yeah, and I like the idea of somebody, you know, Gothfarin is also very good at scouting, If he or, or Thorgren. If one of them wants to uh, perhaps uh, run cover with uh, the young hobbit here. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll roll with Mungo. <laughs> Mungo Megan. Okay. To, try not to snap any branches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think you're figuring out your uh I think you're figuring out your character. You're getting your voice. I love that. <laughs> um right. okay. So the two of you guys are going so uh, break it out for me again. Who's staying behind who's going? I know I know that the ranger and the hobbit are going. Who else is going? Um I'll go I'll go with in the rear of the party, just okay. like you suggested. Okay. Uh it makes sense to go with the second part of the party okay. and go towards the cliff. Okay. And then, Brian, you and Mike, are you staying back here? Are you going with I mean, is the whole group just going? I think the remaining three were going to stay behind, but not not so far back as to not be able to hear. If something happens to our scouts, we want to be close enough to be able to do something about it. Okay. All right. It's not Ogren, such a giant, yeah. Ogren pulls out his telescope as well, keep an eye on the, the wee hobbit. I like it. Okay. So are you going to start looking at him now while y'all are in the same room with the telescope or wait until he's a far, a little bit distant? Nah, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> be kind of funny though. Um, all right. So you, the Hobbit and the Ranger set off. Um, let's have you guys do what? You want to do stealth rolls? You want to do? Yeah. Okay. Stealth. I can live mm -hmm. with that. Let's see what you're coming up right. with here. Let me kill all this stuff from last week. Well, I'll do it later. Great so, okay. success. Great success. What about you, um, Ian? Oh, Auto look at that. Things? You even got an automatic success because you rolled the sign of Gandalf. Okay. These two disappear into the trees and it's clear that they're very confident they're or not very that they're very skilled at this you don't hear them going you don't see any branches rustle or anything they just kind of melt into the trees and you guys are left so jim are you following them or are you stand back oh um you know about 50 to 100 feet back and then as as we said the the three of us will go on ahead and go towards the clearing Okay. They're scouting ahead. Okay. So, so first, I need you to make me. Uh, let's do an awareness roll. Awareness. Here we go. And now if you that want, is. Yeah. You can always spend a hope awareness. point, and you can spend it after you roll. Uh, okay. No, actually, I think you have to spend the hope point before you roll. The only only thing I'm saying is, if you actually, I'm not sure if you have to spend it before you roll or not. That's a good question. I need I need to answer that question. Gotcha. Go ahead. We'll but allow here, we'll allow you to hear after the fact if needed tonight. Here comes that awareness check. Right. 
Um, that would be a six. Do you want to spend a, a hope point to get it one more skill die? You just roll a one d six on it. I, I I think you have to. I think you have to do it before. Let's do it that way. It a- I think it asks you before you roll. That's why I think you have to do it before. Do you want to spend the hope point? Okay. So let me tell you the effect of this. They go into the trees. You're going to follow about 50 to 100 yards behind, or meters, I guess. And you have no earthly idea where they are. <laughs> They've just disappeared so convincingly. <laughs> um, but you can follow them if you want to go into the trees. You'll have to do a stealth roll I, and probably... No, I, 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 I see what you're saying, but the the point was not for the second party to go on ahead and stealth after them. The point was for them to stealth to go on ahead and do the scouting, uh-huh. and then for us to follow, you know, fifty feet, a hundred feet after them. They're they're doing the stealth. Thing, okay, like so that. do do you? We're, we're just going to the clearing. I get it. Okay, so I are mean, are, are yeah. you going to go back to that path and walk the path, or are you planning on going into the tree line like they did? No, you're just going to. I, I almost have no interest in following them. Okay. Uh, we're just going to go to the clearing, and they're scouting for the danger. They're doing their job. Okay, so I mean, you're... I'm almost going. I'm, yeah, I'm almost going. Do 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 do. I get it. Going ahead and get to the clearing. That makes total yeah. sense. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. All right, the, okay. the other two are you, the rest of you guys planning to do the same thing, Mike, Brian. Yeah, we don't. Um, we don't want Nigel to. They go off, off by himself. We want to kind of stay together. So the three of you guys are you, 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 kind of walking out down the path. So we'll go back first to Ian and to Mungo. You guys move using kind of this native skill that you've developed sneaking through the trees. The animals don't bother you as you have left these, have you, uh, you know, left this sort of uh, ruined elfin village and you're, you're able to sort of work your way through the trees, you know, very effectively. And after a, few hundred meters you be, you're, you come to the edge of the trees and you can look out and you can see um you can see what's beyond that and let me hang on one second i gotta get to the right page um i'll describe it so what you've got here and you can see it on the map let me close this so everybody else can see it um it's this big sort of very symmetrical circular uh, level, roughly symmetrical, circular uh, clearing, and there's this big lake in the middle of it. And what you see around the edges, and you can kind of see it in the picture, are these. Um, there are these logs that are cut so they can be um, so people can sit on the logs facing into the um, towards the lake. Um, there's the path you can actually see off to your left where the path that you guys had originally been on kind of opens up and you know opens up into the clearing that's what the other guys are coming down um you do see it uh, looks like there is some some like stone tiles that are roughly at the point where the path comes out into this big clearing and they're kind of turned over and turned to the side so it's it's obviously been quite a while since these things have been used and they're they're overgrown and you can see there's weeds around them and stuff like that um but you do notice, um, you do notice that on the uh, on the logs that are around there, they're they're kind of sort of they're not exactly you know as they were. They're they're clearly it's really been neglected. They're just kind of sort of strewn around, scattered around, that sort of thing. And what you also notice, and you can see this in the picture, that there are several trees that it looks like they have been uprooted all around the lake. They're fairly close to the shore, but it looks like something like knocked them over like it may have something it may have erupted out of the pond itself and the trees are relatively um heavily they're they're buried by vegetation and stuff so this is not a recent thing it's been that way um for quite a while but that's where that's what you see kind of from where you are and roughly and this takes you a little bit to sort of look and spy and all this and all of a sudden you kind of hear this uh rustling talking whatever noise and you look off to the left and here comes the other three members of your party out into the clearing and guys when you come into the clearing what you've seen as you've been walking down this path you you begin to notice these um, stones that were probably like making a uh, sort of a pathway that you could walk on going through the the clearing here but they're you know they're mostly missing they're sort of difficult to see because that they're overgrown and and that sort of a thing Um, but as you get to the clearing and it just kind of opens up in front of you and you see the same stuff I described to them. Um, 
you do see that on the tiles, the few that are there, there's more of them as you get close to the, the lake. And they have what that you there appears to be some sort of runes on the the the, um, the stone tiles the uh, that were that were lining the, the trail. Yeah, and that's what you guys see for now. So tell me what you guys want to do. Ooh. I'm going to say that um, Ian, you and uh, M that you and Mungo are probably right about here on the map, if you can see that. And then obviously everybody else is right here. So yeah, mm -hmm. what do you guys want to do? Well, it makes sense to move to go on ahead and meet our scouts. Okay, well it's going to be move a to meet them halfway. Well, but you don't see the scouts. They're very, oh, okay. they're very well hidden unless they decide to step out and wave wave you guys down. Okay, okay, so they see us, but we don't see them. Okay. Here's what I here's what I do. Um, I sneak through the from when I see them go through the clearing. I'm sneaking through like the tree line towards them, uh -huh. and when they get to a certain point, I hold out my bow and I, you know, I hold it towards them and I say, "You're dead." <laughs> see, it's that easy. Nice. What are you guys doing? Yeah. I can hear you from. All the way over there. You see this little Ooh, little was, tiny guy with a bow poking at you. I could have killed you just now. That was the now. second time I got crabs. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, so Ian, are you coming with him for this? Or are you staying back behind where, where you had been hidden? Or what do you plan on doing? I will follow the jovial Havling. Okay. That may be the new bar that you're going to build whenever you finish adventuring is the jovial <laughs> Havling. I like it. Um, okay, so you guys sort of cluster back together at the uh, at the end of this path, and yeah, so the lakes out there, the trees that are knocked down are there, the 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 logs that are circling the lake are there, and they're you know, like I say, they're in disarray. They're you know, weed and weeds are growing up around them, and that sort of a thing. Um, yeah, so what do you want to do? Is there any no. wildlife at all? It hasn't bothered you again since you came out of the the Elfin Village, and um. But do we see any? Oh yeah, you can see trees. The, the trees have birds in them and stuff like that. It's not okay. it's not okay. completely devoid of animal life. Okay, thank you. As a matter of fact, if you guys want to want to give me an insight roll, I'm happy to have you do that. Wow, well, that's a favorite skill of mine. No, I thought you might want to try it out. Yeah. Oh, that's a good. That's Look at that. Great. That's an excellent roll. Well done. I can't All find right. insight. It's uh, under heart. Oh, I see. Gotcha. So you have nothing but that. Well, that's interesting. Uh, okay. So those of you that are successful, it occurs to you, it's interesting that when you had the elf with you, the animals were, were more interested in attacking the elf. Now that there's no elf with you, they don't seem to care about you being there. These animals, they're, they're racist. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> racist, those racist animals. Well played. Okay. All right. Well, how about how about these uh, these stones here? Yeah, the ones with the um, runes on them. Yeah. Um. Can can uh, Ranger? Can you read them? Let's see. Hold on, just one second here. Is it some or Yeah. Careful it'll be careful not to end up like our elf friend. Yeah, as you look, these are elfin ruin, runes, so if you can read elfin, then you can tell what it says. It appears to be verses of a song to Vala, Lord of Waters, that has been, and the idea, and you're familiar with this kind of tradition, is they would have the stepping stones along the way, and each each would be a verse, and they would kind of sing each of the verses as they passed over these stones, mm -hmm. heading into this sort of sacred grove and just the the verses that are the stones you can still see have individual verses on them that would have been sung by the elves. Oh, go on, sing us a song. I will not be doing that. <laughs> no, I'm at the ring. Something from Bruce Springsteen, perhaps. Negative Ghost Rider. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, there's also uh, and and over here. What is that structure? Show me that again. Well, you kind of can look across over there. It, it's very weed infested. There's trees that are knocked over, um, and it's it's difficult to tell from where you are what that is. But yeah, it, it does look a little different than the area or you know the, uh, the other. It, it's yeah, probably it. like more trees and more branches that fell and that sort of a thing. Gotcha. Well, okay, because it looks like like 
I don't know, like a barrow or something like that. You know what I mean? Four <laughs> huge stones or something like that. What do you uh, What do you guys think? Should we go over there and check that out? It'd be the hiding place. Hmm. I'd possibly something could be buried over there, or maybe by these stones. I don't know. I'd 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 look for some kind of landmark. You know what I mean? Like this is where I buried it. You know, something to remind them. Yep. Any hint of disturbance on the water? The water is very flat and doesn't, I mean, you know, it's, if mm -hmm. like there's a little breeze that comes by and you can see the water rippling a little bit. It's not like it's resisting that, but it doesn't, there's nothing like splashing around in it and that sort of a thing. Okay. Is it, uh, is it clear water? It's mostly it clear. Muddy? Yeah, it's mostly clear. And when you look in it, you can actually see um, some, some like little schools of fish further down and that sort of a thing. Okay. But no horrible tentacly like monsters. Give me um, <laughs> well, not that. Give me actually give <laughs> give me an awareness roll. Okay. Everybody, if this wants to look in the lake, can do that. It's not, but you know, whoever wants to. Um. Uh, well, you're getting all these great successes. Oh, well, Mongo. Anybody else rolling or no? Well, not quite. Well, no, you got. Uh, oh, you didn't get a success. Okay. It's water. <laughs> it's I see water there. Um, <laughs> first thing that you see is Jim. You see that there is a. Um, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Wait a minute. Gotharin, you're the one that sees it, and Mungo, you're the one that sees it. I'm, I was looking at this wrong. So Gotharin, the first thing you see is down in the water, kind of on the right hand side, under underneath the water. Uh, kind of like about here. It looks like there's like a like a maybe you could swim down and there's like a little underground underwater cave entrance there. And Mungo, you are kind of looking. He kind of draws your attention to it and you're looking and you see kind of the glint of something that's not a rock down there. And as you look a little bit closer, it looks like a discarded sword that's laying right at the entrance in the water. Right at the entrance of that little that little Ooh. tunnel. Oh, treasure. <laughs> it says Orcrest. Mungo's gonna throw a rock. Mungo's gonna throw a rock, oh. and they're trying to throw a rock in the center of the lake just to see. Okay. If anything gets attracted. You give uh, me an athletics roll. See if you can hit the center of the lake. The exact center of the lake, and you need a I'm math roll. Good. You probably need a math roll too to get to figure out what the exact center is. But there is no <laughs> math skill. Yep. Shot like, it right on in. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> so all of a sudden. Um, Gothfair, and you're still looking. Mungo grabs a rock and tosses it, and all of a sudden, pow! It hits you in the side of the head. And like, crap! He didn't. He does not. <laughs> oh, he does not oh. know how to throw rocks. <laughs> Sorry, uh, partner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys are still kind of on the side where the path is. Are you? I mean, tell me if you want to. What you want to do? You've seen what's in the lake, but otherwise. Um. um I'm interested since this is a new system. Now I know if we were playing another game which has the word dragon in it, yeah. the idea of diving in that pool would be the sheer amount of stupidity. <laughs> well, but uh, I guess what I'm asking is who wants to take a dive? There are no duck <laughs> characters in this game, that's for sure. Because <laughs> I don't want to jump in that lake. Anybody How else far offshore? Yeah. How I'll far is it stored? Is the sword? It's it's probably about fifteen twenty feet down, and it's right like right about here is where that tunnel is and uh, or that passage is. It's about twenty feet down, twenty meters, whatever. Not twenty meters. Tw uh, yeah, probably about twenty feet down. And the sword looks like it's about half in that tunnel, and it's probably you know twenty five feet down. Mungo is offering to do it. Mungo will do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. <clears throat> okay. A rock chucker. Go ahead. You want to go? So you guys are going to let him do that? Well, I mean, halflings love to. Should swim, we? Right? Should we tie a rope to him? Uh, do you have Just a rope? In case? Is that one of your special things? Idea. Um, I think I might have brought a length of rope with let me check I mean, if that's one of your um, if you still have a slot that you haven't filled in with your useful items mm -hmm. you're welcome to put rope oh, in there i mean 
Yeah, I don't have one, so but I'm sure. Wouldn't rope. wouldn't it make sense to have a rope that isn't a special item? In other words, just rope that's a mundane item that you can use but doesn't add extra dice to wow. something yeah i'm, I'm, not, you know I'm I mean? not opposed to that if you yeah, guys like, if you guys want to use know, it that way that's fine i'm not opposed yeah, to that. yeah like common like common sense rope you know like yeah. torches and would be a common sense item. stuff like that common sense brand rope by yeah i like it <laughs> microsoft rope by microsoft i like it okay <laughs> yeah if you guys want to do that so where do you so are you going to let them tie a rope around you just this once. Don't tell anybody. Just this one time. Okay. <laughs> it burns. It burns. We're fly fishing. With can, you, uh, can you swim well, young hobbit? Are I can swim swimmer? with the best of them. Okay. So Is that a short was... joke? Is that a short joke? <laughs> no, otherwise I was going to say grab a rock and hold on to it. I can swim better than you. Sink. Well, I'm sure you could. <laughs> That's very nice. Okay. Yeah, so Mungo is going to try to do this. How do I do this? <laughs> uh, I would do athletics. Okay, I have nothing in athletics, so I'm going to use hope. Okay, just use a hope point and add a skill die to that. And, yeah, you're going to want to hit, you're, you're going to want to beat your target number. Okay. Fail. <laughs> yep, so he starts swimming down, and you guys are kind of watching him, and he gets about three-quarters of the way there, and he's pulling, and he's dragging, and it just, he suddenly starts kind of paddling really fast, and he starts floating up, and he's paddling faster, and pretty soon he's out of air, and he has to surface, and oh, whew. So, yeah, you didn't make it down. But you did get You close. pulled me up too fast. You pulled me up too fast. Ah, I almost yeah, well, had it. We'll get some rocks to put in your pocket. We'll make this work. One thing you did see when you got to, when you got close is that entrance way does go off um, to the right. As the as you're looking at the the map, it go, goes off to the right, kind of at a at a horizontal, but it seems to be completely underwater all the way down. I'll so, attempt it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. However you guys want to do it. All right. Okay. See if I can do better than Smagle here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. And you just select the hope point bonus die? You don't have to. You can just roll it with an athletics roll if you don't want to do that. Just in case. Now, what's it It popped up inspired? Because, what okay. So let's. Inspired would mean. Well, and that's a good point. If you guys have distinguishing features that you think would allow you to be inspired in some of these roles when you choose to spend a hope point, let me know that as well. Let's look at your character really quick. Is that like the bold and swift? Yeah, yeah. That? So you've got on your... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, you could make the argument that bold and swift both would be something that would allow you to do it. So if you spend a hope point on athletics, it would give you three skill dice. But because I can say, hey, I've got a swift distinctive feature to make you fast to get down there, I'll give you plus two bonus dice. Uh, or not two plus two bonus dice, plus two skill dice. Actually, okay. is that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Do you, do you just click inspired on that and whenever it says, is that how you do that? I think so, yeah. I've not tried it, but I'm guessing yeah. that that's right. All right, let's see how this works. Well, there's a Gandalf thing. All you have to do is roll that to be successful. So, um, Gothfarin down, and he just kind of goes. And what you see is this tunnel. Um, now, first of all, you're swimming, and you're, you you swim right by the sword that's laying there. Do you want to grab it, or you want to just pass it by? Yeah, I want to grab the sword. Okay, so you can grab the sword, and, and you just kind of you know put it in your belt or whatever as you're swimming. And you, you can see the tunnel goes um, to the east for... Or, you know, to the right. I don't know if that's the east. It goes to the right for, looks like about, you know, 30 or 40 meters. And then you can see at the end of that, cause it's pretty murky and dark where you are, but you can just barely see where it kind of works its way up. And you see what looks like, um, the. it looks like it's surfacing. It looks like there's a surface there that you would be able to, you know, get above the water. Okay. Was there anything else around the area where the sword was? No, it was just it was just laying there, and there's just, just the, that just okay. that little tunnel, and then that at the end of it, that sort of angle up. Okay. Um. I'll surface and let 
everybody know what I saw and we'll do company consensus on if we want to check out the other end or the other end of the lake. Well, the other end where it looks like it comes out. Oh, I see. So the other end of the tunnel. Yeah. You guys would all yeah. have to swim through mm-hmm. to the other side. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just I'm, thinking I'm, it might be easier just to, to do oh, it from land and, yeah. Yeah, I could never I could never swim 30 meters underwater. You are right. Let's definitely check out the other end. Yeah. You could yank you, they, they could they could knock you out and then yank you along. You know, put, You could tie me to your waist with that rope. Yeah, you could. Yeah, do I don't want to I don't want to drown. Let, 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 let's definitely check it out on land. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Um so he comes back and he's got the sword and um yeah, he's back. He's drying himself off, and the Hobbit's looking somewhat envious that he managed to achieve it, whereas the Hobbit didn't achieve it. Show off. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, it's a well-known fact that all Hobbits are negatively buoyant. So negatively yeah. buoyant. That's just science. I love yeah, it. Just <laughs> Let's go do here, here. Um, okay, so you guys are back on the shore. You have the um, very good. You have the um, sword, and yeah, what do you guys want to do next? Any we'll distinct check out the feet. Oh. Well, let's check ahead, out I'm... the sword and see why it isn't rusty, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. So, I'll, what what kind of make is it? Any distinctive features? Was there any silt on it? No, it looks like it's actually been recently dropped in there, to be honest. And it looks like it's an okay. el- an elfin made sword. Hmm. I mean, is it a short sword, a long sword? Uh, it is a, a long sword. I'm not sure that it's actually. I don't know how they distinguish. I guess it is a long sword. Yeah, they do distinguish those in here. Oh. Right. Sounds like probably something for the ranger. From the sound of it. Yeah. So. Um, it- so from the sound of this tunnel, do you, do you think you can retrace the tunnel overland to where you think the entrance might be overland, if that makes sense? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we could see the direct, or I could see the direction, so. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Let's do that. Okay. Everybody want to do that? Yeah. Just yes. curious, where are we at on time? What do you mean? I mean, like, what time of day is it? And- we'll say that it is... Um, uh, let's say it's early afternoon. Oh, okay. All right. No, let's say that. Everybody just say it with me. I'm kidding. Oh, well, it's definitely early afternoon. You're yeah, right. There you go. So you want to walk to the east side of the lake and see if you can what do a surface, like a trace of where that tunnel went and where it ended, but do it from the surface. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. So you get the impression... Uh, you know, yeah, I think you can probably do this without any sort of a roll. But you get the impression that it, the tunnel went probably about to here, and that's where it would have surfaced. You know, you didn't go up through it, so you don't know what it was, you know, what was beyond it. But that's roughly the pl- part right here where it surfaced. Okay. Cool. So we can start looking for, like, a potential uh, entry point, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So how do you? So you guys all going to do that? Well, I mean, I can't speak for them, but I'll start looking. Okay, so yeah, that that was my intention. But. Yeah. So give me a scan roll, everybody that wants to do that. It's a it's a, one of the wits skills. Let's see. Wits. I love how these dice are different colors. Oh, I failed. So. Gothfair and Nigel, well. but the two of you are sort of looking around. You don't really find much. You start you start frisking a tree at one point and realize, yeah, this isn't going to do us any good. Um, Thorgren, mm-hmm. you're kind of looking down and you're thinking, you, know, you know about you know tunnels and uh, mines and things like that, and you're you know you're kind of stomping a little bit to see if there's any like um, something immediately below the ground or anything like that. And the, the the ground is very solid here, and it doesn't appear that there's anything immediately beneath the surface. Lens, I think I found something. 
What's uh, this green juice? Well, what he found is that there's nothing there. <laughs> He hadn't found any entrance. There's nothing there. It's just ground. He found... Well, you did learn that. I guess technically you found that. Mm. Just ground. All right, to throw you all off. No one thought to bring a shovel. <laughs> but there was light oh. through the tunnel, right? There was a little bit of illumination, yeah. yeah. I mean, you couldn't really Which see did. above... Like you didn't, yeah, you didn't I mean, surface, but you, it wasn't pitch black. Now it could have been the the light coming in from the the lake itself, but you get the impression that if you had surfaced, there would have been more than pitch blackness. Um, assuming that it was underground, you would there was enough light that you'd be able to see something. Sure, so that tends to suggest we're missing something, right? Hmm. Which might be logic enough to suggest we should just search longer. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, all of you guys, want, you? anybody want to do something different? If you guys all want to do that, you can. Um, Mungo wants to go check out those standing stones. Okay. So as, as you guys are um, sort of searching around and, and that sort of thing, anybody that's going to do another round of search and give me another scan roll? I'll spend a, a whole point this time. Okay. Let's see. Um, here's the scan, and okay, there's the hope. Mm -hmm. Let's see how I do that. Okay, so extraordinary and I, and success. And so Thorgan, you're continuing I, to look, right? Right, and then I subtract the hope point manually, right? Uh, yeah, you just take it off. Actually, actually, I don't see where the hope point is on the character sheet. It's oh no, on, there it is. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's right there. There it is. Okay. And I've done it, and uh, and here's the roll this time. Okay. Good. Yeah, that worked out. Oh, and Gandalf. Gandalf. All right, great. That's okay. for Nigel. All so right. You, so you guys are looking. So the two of you are looking. What about um, uh, the, the our ranger, and what about, um, you know, what, uh, Mike, what about you? Are you guys looking as well? See, are, is this, would this be explore or scan? Because scan says it's when you're examining something closely and yeah. attentively. Well, I would assume that that's what you're trying to do to figure out, you know, explore is like I'm trying to find my way through the wilderness and things like that. And I would imagine that you're trying okay. to very carefully look at the area right there and see what if there's some entrance way. Assuming that's what you're looking for is something that, hey, look, there's a there's a loop of steel in the ground, and if I lift it, there's a hidden door or something that, something like that, right? That's what you guys are trying to find. Okay, so Mike, um, Ian, are you both also doing this, or you saw Mungo just kind of wander off, and he looks like he's heading to the standing stones, or what he thinks are standing stones. Okay. Well, I was so intent on finding that door you're talking about, I didn't notice Mungo wander okay. off. So, Mike, what about you? <laughs> yeah, I will uh, look at the standing stones. With, okay, so you're going to go over there with, with him. Hobbit. Okay, so the two of you guys head over there. I can tell you guys, even with the Gandalf, the the thing that the Gandalf rune tells you is there's nothing here to find you're confident there's nothing here to find um and right about now this is you guys the two of you guys head over um you know mungo and arid and you head over to this area to the north I, th I think this is what you were talking about right here right right yeah mm -hmm. what you do see there is you you do see what looks like crumbled like force you know you know, probably eight foot tall standing stones but they're crumbled one of them's knocked over there's a really big um tree like a you know tree that has fallen right in the middle of them and kind of knocked them askew either way um and there's a lot of like weeds and grass and stuff that has grown up around uh the the tree that's that's right in the middle of the standing stones Can I do a scan area? A scan yeah. of this area? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Dang it. You realize that you're looking at Aridin's shoes accidentally. And I'm looking at Mungo's feet. <laughs> yeah. You guys need to stop doing that crap. Um, okay. The rest of you guys come to your conclusion at right about the time that you realize that Mungo and Aerodin are no longer with you, and you look across, they're over there, kind of down on their knees, kind of looking and doing some searching around uh, the standing stones, or what you thought were standing stones. Well, 
Well, nothing here, eh, Ar Arodin? Yep. What about <laughs> no, the other? No, nothing. Nothing here. What about the other three of you guys? I mean, you just finished doing your area there, and you see them over near those, up, kind of the. Well, north I mean, north side. It, it, admitting failure at what we're doing, I suppose it's time to wander over and see what they've discovered. Okay. So about the yeah. you guys are still kind of doing your looking around and scanning, and you you see the other ones walk over and like, hey, what are you guys doing? And you see the same thing. These are this used to be like a circular area with it looks like four um, men here is standing up, probably about eight foot eight foot tall, but they they've been knocked over. One of them has been broken in half. There's this massive tree trunk that's like right in the middle of them, and it's all grown up around the tree trunk. Is there a way to get into the center like of it? would like to take a look around. Okay, if you guys want to do scan, that's fine. Whoever, the other three of you guys haven't done one yet, so you're welcome to. Uh, sure. Nice. Well, look at that. Um, yeah, the, the rest of you guys go ahead and roll before I say anything. If you want to. You don't have to. Uh, come up. There we go. Well, that's not gonna. Uh, that's not gonna earn well, you that, nothing. That, two ones, yeah. That's, that's not gonna do it. <laughs> Gotharin, do you want to uh, roll or no? Just curious. What is the difference then between like awareness and scan? Awareness would be like somebody is like creeping along near you, or just this general environmental awareness. Scanning is is what you think it is. It's like looking intently and trying to see exactly what's you know what's around you and that sort of a thing. So, I mean. I think I mean we can read the, what the rules say. No, I'm just they'll look it up it's real like quick. They've got these I don't know, skills Let's, that seem to kind of try to overlap, but yeah, yeah. Let's look this really quick, just to you know, we be fair about it. I need to find what I'm looking for. Here it is: skills, skill categories, skill list. I mean, I guess I would be less interested if my scan didn't suck so bad. <laughs> I but. understand. <laughs> so let's go. Explore. <laughs> so see, this is they rely on the explore skill when they move through an unfamiliar area of the wild. An explore role may be may be required during a journey to find out where the company is heading. So I I can I equate explore with navigate. That's what I think of okay. whenever I think of that. That's yeah. That's. But I mean, it says awareness, ability to notice something unexpected, out of the ordinary, or difficult to detect. Yeah, but that's that's you. It's, you have to read that first part. Represents a hero's readiness to react. It's not that you're actively doing something. It's your readiness to react. It's your awareness of your environment that's around you. A high skill score reflects both keen senses and the, exper the experience to understand what is seen or heard. A high level of watchfulness is extremely useful if a hero is, uh, serves as an outlook. Now let's look at scan really quick. And I'm not opposed to you know being flexible about it. Um, scan skill is used when examining something closely or attentively, which is what you guys have been doing. The skill allows a player hero to skim through a book. Or locate a piece of relative information. Look for concealed doors, hidden inscriptions, recognize a familiar face. Okay. Locate a set of tracks on the ground. So this seems like scan is the right okay. thing to do. Okay, I got you. I got you. Now, it's a good question. Yeah. We, we need to sort this out. Okay, so did did you want to try and roll or not? We've got... Oh, yeah, I'll roll. Okay. I don't think it's going to do me much good, but I'll roll. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I needed to, one thing I forgot to tell you hey, guys. Wow, great success. There you go. Great success. And you, you even got the extra success. Um, I do. For, I for, did forget to tell you guys this. You all, every single night that we play, and for those that are listening, we do two sessions in a single night. So I'm giving, I, I give experience based on the night that we're playing instead of the, the per session because we'll do a break in the middle of this. You, you will get, uh, you should, you don't get to spend them yet. But all of you that played last time should give yourself three skill points and three adventure points. And every night that you Ooh. play, we'll do that. And then when you get into a fellowship phase, you'll be able to spend them. Very nice. So just make sure you record that. How okay. much was it? Three um, skill points and three adventure points. I think they're called skill points. Let me be 100% sure about that. Uh, yeah, three skill points and three adventure points. You can see them at least on the 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 player sheet that I'm looking at. It's on the right hand side. Do you see them on your character sheets? Not yet. Okay. Bottom. The wee bottom. The wee. Oh yeah, three skill oh, points. Okay. It's a, yeah, it's yeah, a very okay. a very small bottom is what he said. A wee bottom. 
Um, <laughs> the wee bottom. It's a wee bottom. All right, so um, Thorgrin, you and Gothfarin kind of are um, sort of looking around there with them. And Thorgrin, uh, you look, un- you just kind of walk over and say, well, did you know, did you, you, you didn't look at the door here or did you look at the door here? And at about the same time, Gothfair, and you're like, yeah, there's there's definitely a door here underneath this tree. And you can see just a, set, a very narrow sliver of what looks like a wooden door. It's kind of at an angle, um, but it's built into the ground. When I say it's kind of at an angle, it's like this, a small slope that it's on. Is there a way to open the door? Well, you've got a very large tree on top of it right now. Got a great ox. If you want to chop chop on it, you can do that. Or, I mean, you can roll athletics to lift the thing up if you want to do that. You guys can work together on it. You remember how this works. You can have somebody help you. If if they are your fellowship focus, you can give them, you spend a hope point, you can give them two skill dice to make the roll. And I will say, just to make things easy, just go ahead and we'll do your flat target number. I won't do any modifiers to it or anything like that. No. So whoever wants to, who wants to lift it? I can help. Who's got the highest Thorgan. strength? I'll help you, Thorgan. So is he your fellowship focus, or is he just somebody you're going to yes. help? Yes. I... Oh, okay. I... So, you, Mike, you spend the, the hope point. I'll spend the hope. Yep. And then, Thorgan, you get a plus two skill, di- skill dice. And, um, yeah, just whatever whatever that target number is, just roll roll that for me. Well, it'll, it'll automatically tell me. There's the skill die. Oh, it yeah, should get. Yeah. It should be a chance for you to put add two in there. I roll. Okay, so what you see, what you're seeing is, Ed, did you notice this door? And Goth Farron's like, yeah, there's definitely a door here. And about that time, you just hear this sort of creaking, rolling, and you look, and the dwarf has planted his feet, and he's just pushing, and sweat's kind of coming down his forehead, and. It's like this tearing sensation as the gra- as the grass and the weeds that are all around it begin to tear loose from the ground, and it begins to roll, and you get it to roll about four feet, and it gets just beyond the door, and it gets kind of wedged against one of the uh, standing stones that are broken up down there. But there is now at, at, probably at about a 30-degree angle um, what at one point might have been a barrow. I don't know, but there is a, a big, it looks like a big heavy wooden uh, door that has been obscured by this big tree that's now visible. Thorgrund, you should have told us you were an ogre. <laughs> <laughs> As Thorgrund is is lifting, he lets out a wee fart. I love it. Don't try and hold that in. So, what do you guys want to do? You're staring. All right. Yep. Who who wants to go first? I'll go first. Uh, I'll go after him, too. Mungo does. You're going to chase him? Yep. Somebody uh, light a torch in case it's dark down here. and I'll uh, draw my sword and open the door and head in. Is a torch something we just have? Yeah. Where do you, they, don't, they don't spend a lot of time trying to make sure you put every item of inventory in there. Okay, then yeah, I'll light a torch up and follow Ar- Aerodin. Okay, give me a second here. I need to find out where I put this thing or what I called it. Uh, hang on. I have something. Here it is right here. And... Let's activate it. There we go. Can you guys see that? That's detailed. It's nice. Yeah, I bought this thing, so... It's the cool thing is, and I'll, I'll tell you guys where it is. Before, uh, in a, a matter of fact, I'll tell everybody because there's people watching that might want this. There's a place, there's a thing online that says you know they, they let you buy ten thousand plus maps, and it is it's a vast number. And then you just get to download them in uh, in zip files. And I think I'll tell you the name of it if you guys if anybody's interested in looking because these are quality maps, especially when you zoom in on them, like I'll show you. Those are there, you know. If you zoom in, it, it's really good detail all the way in. And let me do find. They make, do they make Call of Cthulhu maps? They make all, yeah, everything. Ooh, they got nice. science fiction, post-apocalyptic. It means ten thousand maps. There's all settings are in there. Uh, and this is done by. I'm almost there. 
RPG. Yeah, it's, it's some it's, nice, that's some nice detail when you see that. I agree. Yeah, this what is called RPG it's what? called RPG Adventure Maps Bundle. Look that up and see if you can find the site for it. It's like fifty dollars for the whole thing. That's it, one time purchase for everything, which is awesome. I mean, I've been really impressed with what these guys have. All right, so let me do this. Um, you guys are at the bottom of this map right here. And this is where there's like this, it's not really, I guess it is kind of stairs that are going down and you just kind of see this, and it's dark and it's dank and it kind of smells of age and it's very musty and all of these, it looks like it was, you know, probably some sort of um, burial chamber, but it doesn't look like a crypt so much as it looks like there's a like storage stuff and like there's boxes and things like that that are in there. Um, and you can, you, it's like I say, it's dark, but it's not all that far down to see. And the light of your torch allows you to see that there is, you know, down at the far end, which is the north of the map up here, you've got the, uh, you know, you've got what looks like a fairly large, um, a chest or something that's up there. Does the stonework look elvish or? Dwarven? Or? It does look elvish, yeah. Everything here looks elfish. Okay. Elfin, maybe, is a better way to say it. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here. And here. This isn't actually, this isn't a, a game where you say, okay, I want to move here and I got five squares to move and all. It's, it's not that kind of a, a game, but it's better than just, in my mind, just describing it. So I'll put your tokens down there if you want to move around a little bit. There's nothing to block your passageway. I don't. I haven't set up walls or anything like that, but I thought it would be better than just me telling you it was there. I, I understand. Would like to take a loop around? Yep. Same with Mungo. Okay, so you guys... I mean, just tell me what you guys want to do. How you want to do? It. So you're just going to do a scan? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm just really just searching around. Okay. So what Fine. you what you notice around here? If any, well, you aren't finding anything. You're you're not entirely sure you're underground. To be honest. Let's go <laughs> here. You guys suck at this. Suddenly, you guys are scanning really close, and suddenly it gets much brighter. And you look around, you're like, oh, crap, I walked out of the tomb, or the, out of the cellar area here. Like, great, I need to go back in. So you turn around and you walk back in, because you're just doing it wrong. All right, so let me go here. Is that where it is? No. Uh, here. Yeah, that's right. So... um what you can basically see, the door leads is it's like this uh, underground room. It kind of goes off into the darkness, and it does get dark towards the towards the back of it. Your your torchlight kind of leaves sort of these flickering, almost like some mo there's like things moving off in the distance, um, and that sort of a thing. But there's that big looks like there's like a tor at the end of the the corridor. This towards you see what looks like a very large chest, and you can barely see it in the distance. It's very uh, it's very dim, but the the light's just enough to see what you think maybe a large chest down there. Very good. I'm gonna yeah. sneak into. I'm gonna try to sneak into the darkness ahead of us. Sneak I'm into. Surprised you haven't. You said it was dimmer down there, you... right? I'm surprised Mungo hasn't jumped into that chest. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's like the door that's behind you is the only natural light that's in here and the only additional light is your torch light so obviously further north it gets dark it gets dimmer okay so that doesn't really make sense i guess now that i think about it well i mean this <laughs> is because i didn't scan good so this I is for this is further in happening. up here is the furthest in the door is at the very bottom of the thing and as you're walking in you're walking further and further away from the door where the light is coming from now you have a torch so you're carrying light with you, but I, that's what I'm saying. Up at the top, up there, there's yeah. not there's not any ambient light right now. Right. Okay. So yeah, I'm just gonna stick with the group. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Come so, on, Mungo. I'll help you. Come on, Mungo. I'll help you check out that chest. I know it's burning into your soul. I I need it. I I have to go. Yep. Exactly. I'll help you. 
since uh, since we have the uh, what do you call it the uh, the the, um, the fellowship focus. <laughs> there so. you go. So as you guys are going up about, I guess where Aridan is. Is that Aridan at the to- at the furthest north? Um, yes. You and Mungo give me um, awareness rolls. You know what? I'm gonna use a hope point on this. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I don't have any. I don't have any skill and awareness. Well, you can still do it. You just roll the the feet die. That's all you get. Great success. I'll, I'll spend a couple hope points. You only spend one. You can't spend one, but one at a time. I'll spend. I'll spend the hope point. Okay. It gives you one skill die and plus your feet die. Can, can you hope to spend multiple? Yeah. Well, and if you get the eye of Sauron, that's not gonna help you. It's a nine. Um, <laughs> Mungo. You're kind of walking up there, and you hear what sounds like a sort of a rustling noise up in front of you. And, um, yeah, you hear, you hear kind of that up there. And you get this this sort of sense of dread as you're beginning to feel that, as you're beginning to hear that. Narrowed in, there's something ahead. I, I don't see anything. Trust the Hobbit. And you're having this conversation, and all of a sudden, from the darkness, you hear, Is this the living that has paid us a visit? And in the darkness, you begin to see this figure beginning to move towards you, and I'll show you what it looks like in the distance here, from the distance. It's about half visible, and you guys just have this sense of, of you know, this, this sense of terror whenever you you feel that you sense this and this is what you guys see very shadowy very uh half seen but generally this is the picture that your mind puts together here come the shadow boys yeah oh, that's sick. <laughs> oh I, I, we, it's a pushover we got we got this yeah and it's it's, <laughs> it's and that's what and then you you feel somebody pushing your back and hey, you we got this you guys go ahead and do it you guys handle it <laughs> All right. So this thing is beginning to move towards you, and you you feel this sort of this sort of sense of creeping cold that kind of washes over you as you begin to get there. And let me go to here. I want to get to this. I got to get to a certain page here. Uh, I should have done it before, but that's no big deal. Almost there. There we go. So you are sort of standing there and the way that the the way this works this thing's coming for you it's got its sword out and it's walking towards you purposefully and it's um you you just get a sense of it um you just get this sense of sort of evil purpose it's definitely a creature of the shadow and you know this thing is is you know it it's just filled with hatred and it's just coming your direction to uh to, you know, it's trying, what is it, the, it tries to, it's coming to steal and to kill and to destroy, and you've invaded what appears to be its barrow, and it doesn't appear to be all that excited about you having done that, so we're about to go into combat, but before we do that, let's do shadow points, let me make sure I do this right. (laughs) Can, can we alternatively not go into combat? (laughs) If you want to run, you're welcome to. I don't, I don't like this idea. You're welcome, you're welcome to run. It looks terrifying. Yeah, it's supposed to. All right, here we go. Let's get to the shadow points thing really quick. Make sure that I'm doing this right. Okay, sources of dread. Let's say... I'm actually clicking off the picture. I'm Xing it out because I just don't like looking at them. Yeah, I get it. Um, Good. So you guys are each going to take three shadow points from seeing this now you can make your shadow test you remember what you do is in this particular case it's dread so you'd have to make a valor or valor roll and okay, if we if we make the valor roll do we not take the points no if you're successful if you got a successful roll you can reduce one point for every six that you roll every special success you reduce one additional point so in order to not take any shadow points you would have to roll a success with two sixes uh, mixed in. Okay, so the first thing we do is make the valor roll. Yeah, make, everybody makes the valor roll, and let's see if anybody can reduce the shadow okay. points. 
Can uh, uh, Thurgrun use his proud distinctive feature to give him a bonus on that? I don't know if you can do that with Valor points, uh, with Valor rolls. Let's look. Nah. At, let's, I don't think you can. I'm, I'm, I think you can do it only with skill test, and this is not really a skill test. Unfortunately, I'm. I've, I'm gonna double I did check. my roll, but it. I did my roll, but it hasn't came up in the chat window, and there were so many dice on there. I don't know what my roll was. Would you shake your screen really hard? Yeah, there you go. Let's look at. Uh, it says, Brian Gothman. If you want to re-roll it, it's fine. I don't have any problem with that. Well, it's just weird that it. Hmm. Okay, maybe I just thought I made the roll, but I didn't. That's possible, I suppose. All right, here we go. Yep, there's some dice this time. I see and, dice, uh, and that's a failure. Okay, everybody that failed is... Um, just Yeah, just take the three points off. Okay. That's right. So, so I have five... I currently have five shadow it, points. Go your ahead, inspired won't work, right? No, I don't I don't think inspired has anything to do. I'm looking really quick to be sure. Cause it, okay, I'm just because it comes up, I didn't know... If, and it, and it knows that I'm rolling Valor. That's why I was curious. Distinctive features give a good impression of an adventurer, but they fall short. Hang on. Okay. I don't know where the other one is here. I think that's... Yeah. Bear with me. This is part of learning the game, which makes me... Uh, well, play to learn here. Okay. I, Distinctive features I describe am... aspects of the build or temper... Players can invoke a distinctive feature to improve their chances to succeed at a role using a skill. So that's that's what I thought. And this is not a skill. So you can't use your you can't use your inspiration. You can't use your distinctive features to get inspiration, unfortunately. But you can use hope. Um. Yeah, you can use hope. Okay. Nope. Still nothing. Okay, just make sure you're subtracting the hope point every time you use it. So, all right. Okay. So now that we've done that, here's how combat works. First, I'm I had a great success. So what happens with? So how many how many sixes here. did you roll? Uh, Let's look. It looks like you got yeah you got one six, and you were successful. So that means you subtract two of the three shadow points. So you only take one shadow point. Okay. I think, and I figured out what's going on. For some reason, it's uh, on the chat window. Uh -huh. It's coming up as Golferin. You'll notice it says Golferin seven. A roll of seven is a failure, and right below him it says Golferin again, but it's a different uh, picture. I wonder why it says. I don't know why. Golferin. There's two Golferins. Well, let's yeah, look that's in weird, here. isn't that? Let's look and see if you've got. I know. Sorry, I know which pictures of yours, sorry. but yeah, let's see what. Yeah, sorry, sorry to derail things, but uh, yeah, there's a weird foundry thing going. I don't know what's going on with that, but that's a good question. Okay, we'll just look at the oh, picture. We'll know yeah. what's going on then. Okay, so here's yeah, how. Exactly. Here's how combat works, guys. So first thing that's going to happen, I'm going to start combat. Um, oh, this also, is also. It looks like. It looks like Golferin should be miserable, but I don't know if that's me or if it's actually Golferin. No, <laughs> no it's me, because I just changed my shadow points. So, gotcha. wait, you just did what? I just added my new th my three, so yep. now I have seven. How many total hope do you have at this point? How many current hope Six. do you have? Six. Okay, then yeah, you're right. So what that means for being miserable is anytime you roll the Eye of Sauron, um, when you roll your feet die, then it immediately causes it to fail. Okay, so let me do. This should. I wonder what's going uh, congratul on congratulations! You're the first player in the campaign. Yeah, congratulations! To, uh, yeah, have that happen. <laughs> you what, won. This, this thing doesn't seem to work. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on here. This thing does not. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, so you guys are in what's called the volley round. The way the combat works is the first round you can do you can do uh, a volley. Everybody gets at least one round. Nobody's surprised. So all of you guys actually you can look on your little characters and you see what looks like an arrow, a bow and arrow. If any of you guys have ranged weapons for the first round, you can shoot at this thing before you engage it in hand to hand combat. The way that um, after well, let's do that first, and I'll explain it kind of each step as we go. So the first, uh, let's see if I can do opening volley here. I don't know if that's going to move us past. I'm going to start at the top here with Mike um, because it's, I'm just reading from top to bottom on this. So Mike, I, do you have a ranged weapon at all? I have a bow. Okay, so yeah, you can use your bow and take a shot. 
take your best shot. Oh, I have to select the token to attack first. Yep, that's true. It won't let you do it otherwise. And I love that about this. So it doesn't, it doesn't fiddle around with that. Okay, I'm gonna move this over here. Failure. Oh, that's look at that, man! Really you nice. did the worst possible thing you could do. You got a one. Okay, so uh, let's go back <laughs> the enemy here. is upon us. The <laughs> enemy is upon you. You got nothing. All right, Gothfarin, do you have an arrow, a bow and arrow, or a spear, or something you can throw? Again, you guys are completely rattled by this. All right, Thorgren. And you have to manually, if, and, hey, we kids, when you get miserable, make sure you move your tab over to miserable when you roll. Oh, yeah, that's true. Sorry, I didn't mention that. So, Thorgren, you, do you have any uh, ranged weapons? Eh, only my spear. Do you want to throw it? Sure. Okay. How do I do that? You should be able to click the spear and just throw it. It should allow you to do that. Yeah, it does say you should be miserable. Uh, yeah, just go ahead and give me, give me the roll here. Let's see if um, there's a difference in damage here. Standards. Living war gear. That's what I want. The great axe. Well, maybe not. I went too far here. Here's to the north. How much damage does it show for your spear? Because I think you can list it as whether you're throwing it. Um, so it's just the standard spear that can be thrown. And um, yeah, so if you just want to, if you just want to attack with the spear, just I guess just hit it like it's a normal attack. And none of this order order that you guys are seeing is all that real, because this is supposed to entirely be theater of the mind. I'm just doing this because I like to look at stuff. Well, that's not oh a good God, thing, I, man. That's not what you want. It's a C roll to six. Is that literally? Was that literally two in a row? I have sworn. Yeah, you got two. You got two of them in a row. All right, Eli, you have a, you, We I know you got a bow and arrow. You already tried to, to trick somebody with it. I prefer right. to think of it as his power and not our ineptness. It appears that Sauron <laughs> is making this fight very unfair in in his mm -hmm. creature's advantage. Is it's, that how? I, who do I click on? It says I haven't had a token. You have to right click on the monster up there and select it. Okay, right click on the monster. And you see where it's got. Um, there we go. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, if the rest of you guys haven't done that, you all should be doing that before you attack it because you can't attack it without can't actually do anything with it Success. what do you know okay so roll your damage you should be able to just roll damage on the thing it says three damage oh does it already say that where does it say that oh i see it right there yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. let me see if it did it already take it away i don't think i'll bet it didn't no it didn't so where's it at it's a very very you see where it says success look at the language look at right beneath it it says attack result Mungo. yeah but i mean where's the barrel right on the the map. It's right. The the creature. It's right here. And oh, I want to ask this. Too. I can't Could see I... that. Oh yeah. It, it's yeah hard, it, it. The screen's cut off before I, I can even see it. Well, just scroll up. You should be able to do that. Yeah. Hit control uh, up. Let me try. Or you can just there, if, you can also do you just you also just do a mouse and just right, hold down the right mouse yeah. uh, key and you can. Yeah, but right again, I'm I'm just using a touchpad. The control it upward. Thank you. So let's awesome. see. Right click to use the contextual menu here. Okay, I'm going to apply damage to this thing. Uh, and uh, uh, can I shoot and then run away? Is that possible? Well, you're going into the next. <laughs> you're going into the next round, and yes, you can try. Depending on what you want to do. So we got we got one more of these. Jim, uh, did you want to do anything? Uh, I could throw my spear, but I think I'd prefer to keep it as my only melee weapon. Okay, that's fine. I All mean. Right. Yeah. So now we begin I'm combat, in. and here's how it works. There is no, um, there is no initiative. The way it works is you guys have <coughs> there's four battle stances. There's called there's forward. If you think of it as closest to the enemy versus furthest away from the enemy, forward is it's it's a more of an aggressive stance where you get a plus one to hit and they get a plus one to hit you, plus one skill die. And there is a combat skill that you can roll 
in this particular case. Now, I don't. I think as I say this, I'm going to say that I don't think this is going to work because it's undead. But the combat skill would be um, would be the awe roll, and if you're successful and it's a normal creature that's not um, that, that's susceptible to this sort of a thing, then then it would have to go. It would get. Um, a disfavored it, it would get a disfavored role because it would suddenly be disheartened <coughs> so if you want to do that but i will tell you that um the creature is not in affected by the intimidate foe combat task and so i'll just tell you that right now um, but you can always use a magical success to do that unfortunately the only person that you've got that has the ability to do magical successes was your elf so he is not here anymore the middle of your two of your three combat stances so the first one is called forward the middle one is called open you don't get any pluses you don't get any minuses but you can do you can do a, a thing where you can rally your comrades where you roll an enhearten roll and everyone if you so if you roll a normal success everyone in the forward position gets an extra skill die i think it's an extra skill die let me double check that i know it's uh that there's an effect to it but let me be 100 percent perfect i wonder if it's on this cheat yeah. sheet yeah, can we quickly bring that up? Um, uh, last week you went ahead and just showed us that uh, that starter set page, which just had that. Uh, yeah, but it's got but it's got up. my name on it. I don't want to see it. I don't want everybody to see my name. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, my bad. So no, that's fine. That's fine. Let me just double check here. It's not this page. It's character creation. I'm, I've got a cheat sheet here, and I'll let you guys. I'll, I'll share it here in a little bit. That has all this stuff, but let me just get down to it. Only the question is whether or not it's a favored, disfavored role, or whether or not it's okay. Here we go. Yep. So the stances are. So yeah, if you do the second one is if you do uh, the open roll and you do a rally comrades and heart and roll on a success, all heroes in the forward stance get plus one skill die. That's what I thought. On a great success, so if you get an like a, a six, an extra like an extra one, then everyone in the open or forward stance gets an extra skill die. And if you do two successes, um, all heroes in combat get, because it'd be, it'd be not in the, not anybody in range combat, only in close combat. So at that point, open, sorry, forward open, or um, what is the third one called? Defensive. So that's the second one. So if you choose open, your ability is to intimidate foe, which I'm just going to tell you up front will not work with this thing. Um, the second one is open, and your your ability is to do rally comrades, which is to enhearten your your companions, and that's instead of attacking. Um, the third one is defensive, and that means you lose a die to attack, but they lose a die to attack you. You're basically going into a defensive posture, and the the ability that you have there is to protect your comrade. You can um, you can roll an athletics roll, and on a success. Um, if, if this thing is attacking, like whoever is your companion that you choose, it's going to lose one skill die and, um, plus one additional skill die it loses for each. So if you get a, you know, a, an extra success, it's going to like lose two dice, two skill die attacking that sort of thing. Um, in the rearward, that's the guy you can stay back there and use, um, uh, missile combat. But you can only do that in a couple of circumstances. That is, if the enemies aren't, if they don't outnumber you two to one, then you can do it. And you always have to have at least two people in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat in order to have one person doing uh, missile combat. So if you wanted two people doing missile combat, you would need four people in hand-to-hand. -hand. Does that make sense? I know that's a lot of explanation, but this is the first time we've done it, so I want to do it right. So now we're in regular combat we're in the first round of it and the way it works is whoever whoever decides to be in the four in the front whoever decides to say you know i'm in i'm in the forward position it it goes forward position open position defensive position rearward position that's the order of combat and everybody in the forward position goes first and then the monster goes first so sorry the monster goes afterwards so it's uh forward open defensive rearward and then the monster goes does that make sense? You've actually got a decent shot at being able to kill this thing because you all get to hit it before it, it gets a chance to do anything. So I'm just going to ask each one of you guys, Tell me. I just need you to tell me whether you're in the forward, and there may be a way to do it on your character sheet to declare whether you're in the forward, open, defensive, 
or rearward, like doing, you know, ranged attacks. What are you guys, what are your plans to, you, you got to pick one of those. Forgrun will take forward. Okay. So Forgrun will take rearward. Yep. So can I, I wonder if I can actually do that here. No, I can't do that here. Is there a way on your character sheet to do that? I haven't actually looked to see, but I'm sure there must be some way to represent that. Can I see? Just to add the bonus dice for forward? You should be able to do it. Hang on, I'm going to open it up and look real quick. So something under advanced. I'm betting whenever you use your your combat proficiencies, because it's down at the bottom here. So let's say that you use axes. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna roll it for you. Um, difficulty, bonus penalty, advance. It doesn't look like. Yeah, I think you're gonna have to just declare it, and then it looks like you're gonna have to um, give yourself plus. So in your case, for in the forward position, you're gonna you're gonna get plus one skill die, but he is too. He's going to get plus one skill die against you. Um, okay. It doesn't look like there's any way for you to declare that, and then it just takes care of it for you. But, yeah, go ahead and mark that. Okay, so Thorgren is forward. What about Mike? What about you? What about Aridin? Open, of course. Okay. What about Gothfarin? Forward. Okay, two and forward, one and open. Um, what about Eli? Rearward. Okay, so you can be back there shooting arrows in Jim. I'm thinking open. Okay. So two forward, two open, one rear. So let's start with the ones in forward. So it's going to be um, Gothfarin, and that's going to be Brian. And it's essentially simultaneous, so it doesn't matter. So let's start. I'm just going to read top to the bottom. So Gothfarin, why don't you go first and do your attack? Can I do the Inhardin roll to give them a bonus? Um, they go first, so I think you do it, and it'll apply next time to them. Okay. Extraordinary sounds good. What did you get? Let me go back over. Extraordinary here. success. Okay, so I open now. I'm even now. I'm even more miserable, I guess. But what the heck? Well, that's pretty good though. <laughs> Extraordinary, but you did. You didn't like you targeted this guy because it doesn't say anything about doing damage. I clicked on him. So you've got. Yeah. Let me let me actually do this. I really had to quick. double right click on him to get it to work. Or you click on him and then click on, on the upper left. You click on the little bullseye. Yeah, you have to hit the bullseye. If you click on him, that's not enough. You, uh, yeah, and that's true. You aren't familiar probably with, with Foundry. Um, let me... Uh, so let's do this. Before I do anything else, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set your guide to miserable because I think it's just a slide that you have to do here. Uh, should be miserable. Yeah, I see that. Miserable. It doesn't look... Looks like you can check it. Oh, maybe I'll do it this way. Yeah. So the way that you do this, just to let you guys know, I just on Gothfarin's sheet here, in order to in a, turn on the miserable condition, you have to hold the Alt key down on your keyboard and click it. If you just click it, it's not going to do it. Now, if you want to remove the miserable condition, you have to hold down the Alt and the Shift key and click it, and it'll remove it. But you're now set to miserable you weren't before, so go ahead and just re-roll against thing. You should be able to hit that target icon. Let's see what happens when you re-roll. And I'll probably be fairly forgiving if you miss. Do you it was set to miserable when I rolled. Well, because I did it. Well, I did it physically. Oh, I see. Because your character, I just I just said it on your character sheet. What? But now it's going to burn another hope point that I just used. Well, don't don't worry about that. We'll give you the hope okay. point. You, you can add the hope point back. I know what you, yeah, we'll, okay. we'll fix that. Gotcha. All right. You can add that back manually in a minute. Holy crap, there's a lot of that. So that's even a better success. Well, it's not the, so you did get a great success. Okay, so here's the thing about great success. I want you guys, this is, like I say, this is a simple system, but there's some things to keep uh, sort of in mind. When you do a great success and you're doing combat, you're attacking with your sword, right? Um, let me see where it is here. Before this, yeah. So you can do special damage. When you roll one of these sixes in the middle of the combat, for every six that you roll, you get an option for special damage. So here's your options. You can either do a heavy blow. The way that this works, you're, if you look at your character sheet, your weapon has a very specific number. There's, you're not rolling for damage. It's a fixed number. I think it's like a three or something like that. But you've also got your strength attribute, whichever that is, four or five, something like that. Um, if you 
get a like an extraordinary success, you can use heavy blow, which means you can spin that success icon to increase the damage you do by your strength rating. So what is your strength rating? Six. Okay. So look at your sword. What is the the damage for your sword? Should be down there about halfway down. Five. Okay. So you'd get eleven damage instead of just five damage if you did that. Um, here are the other ones that you can use. You can fend. You can fend this thing off. You can exploit your successful attack to place yourself in an advantageous position. You spend your success icon and modify your parry rating by plus one if you're using axes. Plus two if you're using swords, plus three using spears. So you get a plus two to your parry. Your parry sets your target number. So this thing's going to try and hit you, and it's going to have to beat your target number, which is your parry rating. So you could get a plus two to that if you'd prefer. The piercing would be uh, bows, spears, and swords are the only ones that, that apply to that. And um, it modifies the feet die numerical result of your attack by plus one if using swords. So what did you roll on your feet die? Let's take a look at that really quick. Your feet die was an 8. Okay, so if you roll a 10 or a 12, that's called a piercing attack. And that that you, and if it doesn't successfully roll its protection roll, then you've done a wound on it. And it's got a rating. Um, this particular thing, I mean, I'll go ahead and tell you what it is because we're learning this together. Um, the rating on this particular thing, hang on. Oh, I need to go one more page. Um, it has a rating of one. It's called a might rating. So that means it can take one wound before it's, it's dead. So if you're ever rolling and you got a 10 on your feet die and you get a special success, then you might want to go in here and say, you know what, I'm going to add, I'm going to make it a piercing attack. So I get suddenly this nine on my feet die is now a 10 and that's a piercing attack. It has to roll a, six, a protection roll. And if it fails it, um, then you've killed it just in one shot. Does that make sense? We'll figure this out as we yeah. go. I'm familiar with this, and I'll walk you through it every time. But you do get one special attack or one special success, so you, you can choose any of these three. Heavy blow, fend off, or pierce. Pierce will not do any do you any good because you've only got an eight on your feet die this time. Um, Heavy blow. Okay, so we're going to take – I don't actually know how I you – know, okay, so you also didn't I – mean, we'll, we'll do this manually, but next time we're going to have to figure out a way – that you actually got the targeting set up properly, so it actually allows me to subtract the damage. I'll do it manually this time, though. Let's do. So we're gonna take eleven. Oh, it off still of it. didn't select it. Yeah, it still didn't select it. I'll You'll take know it. you have it targeted because it'll have four little arrows around the the barrel weight. Yeah, it'll be po it'll be pointing at it like kind of moving. It does. Okay, I don't know why it didn't allow me to roll the to set the damage. Oh yeah, because it's got yeah they they the four little arrows in each corner and it goes towards it on okay. my screen. Okay, I don't know what it is that kept me from doing it, but it's okay. I can oh. I I can just as easily subtract this stuff, so it's not that okay. big of a deal. Okay, so now that's the people in the forward. Um, oh wait, that's not the people in the forward. You've got we've got to do. Uh, We've got to do Thor Thor Thorgrin. Thorgrin. Yeah, Thorgrin's next. So what you saw is the sword. He took his sword out and just hammered this thing and sort of staggered the thing back and just tore through its armor. And you can see beneath it like ribs and you sort of this desiccated flesh and everything. And um, again, the cold is still emanating from it and just sort of sweeping over you. But now it's your turn, Thorgrin. Uh, how does uh, Thorgrin use his Dower handed virtue. His say that again. Read it to me. What does the dower handed mean? Uh, is this one is, increased strength? You're going to increase in strength score by one. In one, plus gain plus, plus one bonus to weapon damage roll using strength. Okay. Is it like already uh, incorporated? I don't. I am not sure if it's incorporated or not. Tell me what your. I can tell you whether it is. Tell, um. Well, it may be difficult for me to be a hundred percent sure about that, but I think I can. Give me one second here. And then my axe has a, a keen reward on it. A keen, a keen what? Reward. Reward. Okay. Under which, rewards, it's... Yeah, which that should be uh, that should be incorporated already. I should have already written that or done that on your character sheet. Let me look to be sure on that one. And for those of you that are watching, this will be quicker later because we're learning this, we're sorting it out. I hope you're enjoying seeing us sort this thing out. So, okay, let's do, 
Let's look at your weapon really quick. Oh, keen here. Okay. Let me go in here. Oops. In here. Let's go here. Oh, it's on your... I got to do it on your axe. Don't do it on... So on your great axe, let's go here. And you've got... What is an axe's normal damage? Do you you guys don't have any idea? I'll find it really quick. I've got seven here, but I don't know if. Yeah, I see it. I see it says seven, but it's a modifiable number. Okay, this is a great axe. Yeah, the damage is normally seven. So, what does this thing do for you? What does the ability uh, do for it's you? This, I think it says attacks using the axe score a critical on a roll of nineteen to twenty. 19 to 20. I think what that's telling you, because... I, the... yeah, I, I think it just said, uh, look on page 79, and I think I added those notes in there, so okay. I knew what they so meant. So let's look on there. Let's do... Tell me what it is again. It's a uh, keen weapon. Sharper, better balanced. Attack rolls made with a keen score a piercing blow on a result of 9 on the feet die. So... What that means is not on a 19 or 20. You're gonna you're rolling, and when you that 12 sided die that you roll, if you roll a 10 or a 12, that's a piercing attack, and then it has to roll to see if it gets a wound or not. Um, but for okay. for you, it's a 9, a 10, or a 12, and it will have to roll. Nine, to, 10 or 12. Yeah, that's all that means. Yeah. Okay, so that makes more sense because the D20 we don't even use D20s in this. I'm like, what are we talking about here? Okay, <laughs> so if you get if you get um, a 9, a 10, or a 12 will understand that that is a uh, piercing blow. So what else does this thing allow here? Let's see. It's, that seems like that's all that it allows. So what else are we asking about? The the dower doer, whatever. Is there something about that? Uh, dower handed. Is that your? Is that for being yeah, a dwarf? Dower handed. Is it a dwarfing uh, capability? It might be. It's one of my virtues. Oh, okay. So it'll be under your virtues. Yeah, your blows have become more forceful, allowing you to do greater harm when inflicting special damage. That's the sixes that you roll. You can add plus one to your strength rating on a heavy blow and plus one to your feet die if you're doing a piercing blow. So if you get a six, then, and you say, hey, I want to do a heavy blow, then we'll take your strength and add one to it, and that'll be additional damage. And if you say, I want to do a piercing blow, then you get, like right now, it's a nine, a 10, or a 12. But if you get a, if you get, an extra six on top of it. And you, you can stack these. Hey, I've got two sixes. Great. You can add it twice in any of these things. Then it would become an eight, okay. a nine, a ten, or a twelve. And I guess if you do it again, it'd be seven, eight, nine, ten, or twelve. Okay. At least I understand it now. Okay. So, so what I'm looking for is sixes. You First, you want to be successful at hitting it. And then after that, you want sixes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's oh, start by seeing if you hit him. Box. Get a bonus die for being forward. You do plus one, plus one skill die for being forward. Yes. You got one six. You got two sixes. So you've got two choices here. Let's see what your your feet die was. Your feet die was a six, so you'd only get up to an eight, and you only get a nine, ten, or a twelve. So don't use it for pierce. You're gonna probably want to use it. You're gonna probably want to use heavy blow. So your damage for your axe is what? Your hit your your uh, seven. Uh, your se seven. It's a seven for your great axe. What's your strength? Seven. You got a seven strength. I lost I, you. Wait, I heard, I heard I lost you for a second. Say it again. What's your strength? Seven. Okay, seven. Okay, so if you take both of these special successes. Because you've got this, you got this keen edge. You get a plus one on each one of those. So it'd be seven damage for the axe plus eight plus eight is what you would end up doing. So you would end up what sixteen, um, twenty-three points of damage is what you'd be doing because you got these two, <laughs> you got these two freaking sixes, which is not expected. But you want to do that? That would that's the heavy bless the effect of the heavy blow. Or you can so you, you can choose submit. something else. I mean you yeah well, is it even allowing me to do that on this? Let's look. 
See, I don't see the ability again. I don't see anything in here. I mean, if you, you I tried, if there's something on your character sheet that lets you do something, then yeah, do it. What in the heck is doing? Is that, okay, there we go. Okay, good. So deals. Tw oh, look at that. He does. He deals 23 damage. So watch this. You guys watch oh this. God. Watch this thing. Here we go. Um, apply damages. Here we go. And does it do it automatically? You've just so Thorgren walks up and says, "You didn't do a good enough job," and he just takes this thing and completely beheads it, and it doesn't even get to do anything oh. because it's not so you're not supposed to freaking do 23 points of damage at the outset, and this thing just collapses, and the sense, the feeling of doom and cold and just this intensity begins to immediately fade, and you're feeling like that you're just back in a normal room again. Lads. Um, let's go. It didn't even get you to do anything. Save some for the rest of us. Save some for the rest yeah, of us. Yeah. Well done, but you, you're now you out of combat. You didn't let Nigel with his strength of two go on ahead and <laughs> give a chance to show his metal. You guys can see that when this All right, lads. you guys can see that when this combat is we get this down, it's gonna be a very interesting way to do combat. So here's what we're gonna do. Um I didn't know how much longer this combat was gonna take. Let's go ahead and stop here and we'll pick up um, next time and let you guys go. We'll keep you here in this sort of cellar area and then we'll pick up and kind of go from here with the, uh, with the next session. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Sounds good. Very good. I, I think, I think we're getting our hands around this guys and I really think it's cool. Thank you guys for watching and we'll look forward to having you, uh, for the next session. So we will talk to you guys soon.